back to my channel my name is Irida if you're new here so say Irida if you're coming back first of all happy new year first video of the year ah I'm so gassed and I'm so excited for this year like YouTube wise and also like just in general so today as this is gonna be my first video I wanted to do a little bit of commentary I wanted to talk about internalizer for Jimmy one thing that actually really really prompted this video was seeing different trends on TikTok I'm James I'm 17, and I'm pretty sure I'm a psychopath. Hmm, you know, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know, I don't trust that. Yeah, I just wanted to add my own two cents. I also wanted to talk about misogynoir. Okay, so first of all, I like to just define some words. So first of all, I want to define misogyny. According to Cambridge Dictionary, misogyny is defined as the feeling of hating women or the belief that men are much better than women. So this is an all area of life, economically, socially, and you know, just like a man being in women's business at all times. Even in law, like you have men making decisions of whether or not sanitary towers should be free. So next I'm going to be defining misogynoir, which is a term coined by Moya Bailey, who is a black queer feminist, and she says the hatred directed towards black women. So misogynoir is where race and gender come to interlink. Finally, I'm going to be defining internalized misogyny, which I use Urban Dictionary just to put it in layman's term, which is basically distancing and belittling women, along with shaming them due to believing that your gender is inferior. For example, I'm not like other girls because I am into gaming or I'm not like other girls because I don't wear makeup or I'm not like other girls because I'm not into nursing. Another one is saying things like feminism makes me so embarrassed and I'm so ashamed to call myself a woman like oh my gosh like they always find a way just to make it about women. Stop thinking that women are still oppressed we're literally living in 2021 like honestly and a big 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 example of like internalized misogyny is definitely pick me. Being a pick me is basically Basically a woman or a girl who goes out of her way to impress boys to make them seem like they are quote-unquote not like other girls so for example though they can say things like women aren't funny which really needs to retire because it's been a long time and that's the only thing we know how to say or like I don't wear makeup because I am naturally this that and the other I have so many guy friends because guys are much more chill can I just say one thing about that if you have a lot of guy friends in general, good for you. However, if you're like, I have so many guy friends because like girls are so dramatic, boys will literally come and tell you people's business unprovoked. You'd be in McDonald's and here comes some guy telling you about another person's sexual history. I'm not saying that girls don't have like drama. At least it's in context. I'm not even advocating for drama. Stop telling me people's business unprovoked. It's really, really weird. Those are a few examples of internalized misogyny. Of course it goes more than that. And next I'm gonna give some example of misogyny. One big, big example is black women being labeled as aggressive when literally expressing themselves, literally existing. Like that is literally it. Another example of misogynoir is when black women speak about issues, people ignore them for years. This can be issues about race, this can be issues within medicine, this can be even like little things. Like I feel like even within YouTube, quote unquote drama. Now I don't really know who is who between these stuff, but black women have been saying these things for years because uh, yeah, you just don't think what she's saying is of value. Another thing is like when black women speak about um issues that for example race again but people would rather hear it from a white person because they like the way it was packaged or like oh they said it in a way where if they were almost spoon fed or like they said it in a way where they found it appealing if a black woman wants to scream at you for for having to talk about race for the 599th time so be it because how much how much more do you want to be babied before you know that this is an issue another thing was like the period at which black men um had this caricature of black women that they would do in comedy and i'm talking this was very very prevalent among youtube instagram comedians even vine as well and the thing that got me was how normalized they made it that people of other races felt so comfortable doing it that you would tell them that this is actually very racist and they would literally with all of their chest tell you 
that they don't think is authentic. No, it actually really, really irritates me because there are so many comedians. You are literally famous because you were making fun of a black woman. Like whether it's her hair or whether it's the way she spoke or, or whether it's the way she chose to explain something to you or whether it's literally just her whole existence, you made it into comedy. It's so weird. It's so violent because it's like, this is not you and you can live your life doing all of this, but you, you can detach yourself from this. This is literally me. Like, this is my existence. I cannot detach myself from being a black woman. I cannot detach from myself from being black. Like, this is the first thing you see and this is the first thing you will take into consideration. And I just feel like it's just, it's weird. Now I want to talk about growing up in a predominantly white area and also misogyny and to slowly dive into misogynoir. So I wanted to talk about this not being like other girls in a predominantly white area. I grew up in a predominantly, okay I didn't grow up but I moved into a predominantly white area. I completed my secondary school here and I also did my sixth form here and there was this not like other girls not phase but it was definitely racialized because as a black girl you are not like other girl here and you feel out of place because the way people talk to you is different like whether it's there is a sarcastical tone to everything there's an extra sense of policing yourself of from the way you speak and to the way you express yourself so for example for me hair was a big one um i actually do my hair naturally for literally all of my life i did extension like in year seven and year eight and then i went back to do my natural hair or throughout secondary school when I wasn't cutting my hair. When I got here, I was like, oh my gosh, I should try straighten my hair, which is the first time I ever had the idea of straightening my hair. Like when I was with my friends in London and like when I was just doing hair before, like I never thought of the idea of straightening my hair. Oh yeah, I can straighten my hair because at least now I was in my school had something in common. I could somewhat feel included and feel validated because even though we don't have the same texture, it, we have something in common where we can talk, talk about straight hair. Even though I didn't straight my hair, I insisted on doing twist out. Can I just say, I know how, that's the only hairstyle I know how to do. I can't do any other hairstyle. But like, I knew, cause I did my hair natural, there were like different, like traditional hairstyle that my mom wanted me to do. And I literally didn't want to do that because I knew that those hairstyle had a lot to do with um, culture. It had a lot to do with expressing my blackness and I wanted to tone down my blackness as much as I can. First of all, I didn't want it to be ridiculed and I didn't want it to be that I have to defend myself all of the time. Being the only black girl, like there was nobody else to confirm what I was saying. Another way, I literally had to change everything from the way I spoke to the way I expressed myself and even to the way I dressed because I was just like, baby, we're in the suburbs now. <laughs> Nobody's gonna see that. <laughs> Having to change the way I spoke from East London to literally a whole new area and a whole group of people, we enunciate words in ways that I've never enunciated words before. This was also confirmed to me that, oh yeah, this is how you're going to be expected to speak at a workplace. Like you say your T's properly, you say your I's properly. But then the thing that came with that was that with learning accent, I kind of developed this while I'm not like other black girls because I enunciate my words and this is how I talk around people and this is how I behave around people and it was like well maybe I am better than other black girls but the thing is that in saying that I was better or I wasn't like other black girls it was not that I wasn't like other black girls it was just that I stripped myself of blackness to conform in a way that I would be liked with my white peers and also in school and because I did not want to be ridiculed but then the thing is that even though when I if I was like around my my friends in London and was like oh yeah you're saying these things and they're so like they're so like proper like oh like you're so posh and everything when I returned back to school it was like well you spoke white and it's just like baby this is your fault <laughs> as a black girl who lives in a white area you you do it as a sense of survival because you genuinely just want to be like well I can't wait till I get to uni so like when I meet my black friends I can just be my black self again apart from even my experience with living in a predominantly white area another way misogynoir operates is the way that black women are expected to look their best a thousand percent all of the time 
at all times without fail. Like you can't have a bad hair day. You can't have a day where you're just feeling sad. You have to be the funniest person. If your lace is not melted, everybody has something to say. But like a white girl can literally go outside with a messy bun and everybody's just like, you know, she just has a, she's just a bad hair and everybody accepts that. But a black girl is not allowed. Even on TikTok, TikTok is a great app in which that you don't have to look a certain way. Like you don't have to have your hair done like you do on Instagram stories. Like you don't have to be dressing your best. You can literally just whip out your phone and you just wake up and say something to the camera. But even then, when black women do something like that, it's like, oh yeah, her hair does not look good for me. Or like sometimes like people will even commenting like, oh yeah, her baby hairs is not laid. And you click on the profile and it's like, baby, you're not black. Why are you in her business? I just think it's so weird. Like why are black women expect to be so so a thousand percent all of the time for what and for who even now and even sometimes when i see a black woman who doesn't have her hair done or like she's just in front of the camera sometimes i'm like oh maybe she could have put a scarf on and i question myself and i think well why shouldn't she like why should she put a scarf on there did she come to talk about her hair even if she did come to talk about her hair are you listening to what she's saying that's not the purpose of the video if she knew that what she would be saying if she wanted to put a scarf on baby she looked at the video, she made the video, she watched the video back and she could have been like, okay, maybe I should re-record this and do it when I'm feeding myself or like when I'm putting a scarf on. But no, she decided to post it when she didn't put a scarf on. So let's just go. Just face your front and mind her business. You don't pay her bills. You never will pay her bills. Even if you do end up paying her bills in the foreseeable future, she doesn't owe her life to you. So... Okay, so next I'm gonna talk about a learning misogyny and internalized misogyny. To me personally, um, the first time I ever realized that I kind of like internalized misogyny and also misogyny at the same time was when I was listening to Say Your Mind podcast, the host Kalechi Okofo was saying certain things and I was thinking, oh, Ira, you're kind of a bitch. You should really change that. <laughs> you should really, this is not the way, baby. I really do feel like you have to be intentional about it and you have to start, you have to question yourself. Another thing for me was definitely when I went to uni and like I was, I made friends with black, different black girls. Not everybody, first of all, has the opportunity to leave an environment, but I think when you do, or like when you meet other people online, you are open to another type of environment and another way of thinking and another way that people live their lives. So for example, if you have a perception about certain things and you see somebody who does that thing that you have a perception of and you see the way they do it and you're thinking, this is literally just another girl and she's literally just living her life. Another thing for me, Allowing myself to enjoy things like whatever it was. I honestly love country music. You will hear that country. I do, you will hear that country music by force. Everybody's like, oh, so like she's listening to the white people music as well. Like it bangs. <laughs> it just bangs, okay? I have nothing more to say. Like understanding as well that black women and black girls are literally not a monolith. There are black um, goths who exist. There are black girls who are into metal and there are black women who literally have no desire to um, be an activist or be an, a spokesperson for race issues. And they're absolutely allowed to do that. Or like who like doing some really, really crazy things that's like, oh yeah, you know, black people don't do that. What they do, you might not see black people in your immediate circle who do those things, but black people are individuals. Another thing is definitely like checking up on myself. If there is one thing I'm going to ask is why, mm, I am going to ask you why. Why do you feel like you're not like other girls? And have you met other girls? Do you know that other girls do the same thing as you? So I do feel like checking up on yourself is nice. And also creating a group chat with your friends. Like I always say, before you come and say something on the internet, say it in your group chat and if what you say is mad there should be somebody in your group chat who tells you that listen what you're about to say is mad and if nobody tells you that maybe your friends just don't like you and they're just waiting for your downfall okay so to end this video will misogyny or misogyny go away um hopefully yes 
But realistically, I don't think it would. Okay, so misogyny and misogyna is part of whiteness and whiteness is a constant moving structure that needs to be affirmed and that needs to be assured from old generation or new generation. So I started to stumble upon my words so I'm deciding to do a voiceover instead. So to continue what I was saying, whiteness is an extremely fragile structure and when whiteness starts to realise or when agents of whiteness start to realise that whiteness is starting to crumble, it needs to to be somehow reaffirmed and to be told that it can be secure. So for example, black women, we created strong black women and independent black women as a way to fight racism. So we started creating spaces for ourselves. We started writing books and we started to reevaluate theories and also question theories. So we can see that within feminism, we started to see that, well, if you look at feminism as a whole, feminism only advocated to cis white women. Like there was no space for black women. And there was no, even when we see that there was no space for black women, there was no space for queer black women so we were like okay so now we need to look at feminism as a whole and like start to redefine everything so back to strong black women black women this as a way to give themselves voices when we see strong black women it, it confronts whiteness as a thing because it's like okay but black women are literally individual people and they're allowed to have voices as well at the end of the day the strong black women and independent black women kind of lost its meaning because then white people and um, agents of whiteness in spaces that cater to black women started to use this against them so within medicine we started to see that black women were not given the proper care during childbirth they were not administered the accurate medicine anytime they brought a threshold of pain that i'm feeling they were often ignored and they were just not listened to they saw their bodies as something that could handle pain and we can see this is how black women are for example, five times more likely to die during childbirth. So we can see that within old generation, the strong and independent black women as how whiteness has been able to find its way through it and like basically reaffirm itself by saying that, okay, black women are not allowed to be seen as human being. So within new generation, we can see that um, colorism is a big rampant one. I'm not saying that colorism literally just dropped in 2018 and now it's affecting black people. For example, you can see this through like YouTubers who stand on the streets and ask just random people, would you rather date a light skin or a dark, dark skin person? And like racial preference within dating and just within the black community itself and how young people just seem to see that if I am lighter than you, that means I'm better than you or like I have more capital than you in general, which to be honest, you are like as a light skin person however it just shows how whiteness just constantly needs to be affirmed because it's an extremely fragile thing that cannot stand on its own if we say that we as new generation of black women we don't see ourselves as um, strong black women and we just see ourselves as carefree people but now colorism is another thing so like whiteness is finding a new way to adapt to new people and to new points of views every single time thank you guys so much for watching this video this is my opinion and this is just my two cents being not like other girls is especially in the predominantly white area like i said these are my opinions address me in the comments i don't want to see the black community said no Ira said baby just remember before you come and do pick me and not like other girls um patriarchy is kicking your ass as much as it's kicking my ass baby let's just come and do friends because i i have had enough so yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video uh i'll see you guys in my next video bye